Good morning, everyone. It's good to see and to have each and every one of you with us today. And for all those that are joining us uh, through our various video platforms, we thank you for being with us today. And we praise God for your uh, part that you're playing with us today in our service. It's a beautiful day in the Lord and a great time to celebrate all that Christ has done. And surely today we do celebrate the fact that our salvation is in Christ alone. And you know, that ought to do something for us. That ought to do something to us. There's a story. A uh, little boy got to go and spend a week with his grandparents on their farm in the country. And so about the second day or so, he goes out into the barnyard and he begins to look at all the animals and he sees the chickens out in the barnyard and they're scratching in the dirt and doing their thing and there's a hen cackling with joy because she's laid an egg. But the little boy looks at the chickens and he says, that's not it. And he goes over and he sees a hog laying in the water in the mud and the hog's laying there just as blissful as it can be, oblivious to the dirt and things. And the little boy says, that's not it. He sees a little colt running and jumping and kicking up its heels, and he says, that's not it. And he finds the baby goats, and they're doing somersaults off of the feed box, and he says, that's not it. And he walks into the barn, and he goes all the way down to the barn in the very last stall, and he finds Grandpa's donkey with the long face and the sad expression. And he gets very excited, and he jumps up and down, and he begins to holler, Papa, Papa, come to the barn, come to the barn. Grandpa comes rushing into the barn, and he said, I have found it. And he said, what is it that you have found? He said, this is the animal that has the same religion that you have. <laughs> Folks, we are in a time of celebration. As a matter of fact, as Christians, we ought to celebrate and rejoice in Jesus Christ. Do we consider the infinite meaning sometimes? You know, I, I like to think about words. And so sometimes I don't think we, we miss the meaning and the concepts of some of Christ's words that deal with his presence in our lives. Do we understand? Do we rejoice in? Do we reflect on the fullness of what he is providing for us? Our theme this morning, our title for our message is... Good tidings of great joy. Good tidings of great joy. Not just a little bit of joy, but great joy. Great joy in what? Great joy in our salvation through Jesus Christ. I don't want to be redundant this morning, but I do want to go back, and I appreciate the Haynes family for coming and sharing our Advent reading this morning. But I would like again for us to turn our attention to Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14, because I want us to think about some of the phrases. Listen, it's not every day that the angels appear, right? It's not every day that you have a spectacular event. So when a spectacular event happens that is a proclamation, we ought to pay attention to the concept of the proclamation that is being given. So Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. There's three words that I want to emphasize in that proclamation. There's a lot of things there that we need to think about. But there's three words that I want to focus on this morning. Joy. The, the, the angels came and they said they were bringing good tidings of great joy. What are the good tidings of great joy? There is a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, who has come. And then he says the reason that Christ came was to bring 
peace. So when we think about those three words, with the emphasis on those today, out of that, specifically we will be mostly talking about joy, but I want us to think about those three words. The Savior, who is to be Christ the Lord. When the angel came and spoke to Joseph in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the angel said to Joseph, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Folks, every one of us, Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us have needed a Savior. The only difference between those who may not currently need a Savior and those who still need a Savior is the breaking point of whether or not you have received the gift of Jesus Christ into your life. And if we have the gift of Christ in our life, then we have a Savior. If you today are here or if you are watching and you have not yet received Christ as your Savior, then you need a Savior and Jesus has come to be that Savior on our behalf. Jesus came to be our Savior, to redeem us, to pay the price, to buy us out of our sins. And he did it because he loved us. We don't celebrate Christmas because it's an obligation from God. We celebrate Christmas because it is a, a, the, showing us the love of God toward us in that Jesus came wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger, and he came for the specific reason of being our Savior. The other word that we would talk about this morning is peace. Jesus provides our peace. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Jesus. I want you to think about that. In the Bible, there's a couple of words. You know, when we deal with salvation, we think about mercy and grace. We have joy and we have peace. And when you're talking about salvation, you will find those words used in some combination from time to time. So we think about the word peace. And according to the book of Philippians... When we think about peace, the Bible says that God will provide through Christ the peace that passes all understanding. Do you know that that is an infinite concept? It says there is no end to the peace. It is beyond our human ability to comprehend how that peace comes into our life. Who supplies that peace? We know it comes from God, but how he supplies it, the, 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 uh, the magnitude of that peace, it is a peace that passes all understanding. So when the angels came and they made the proclamation on that night of the night of the birth of Christ, they said, peace on earth, opening and giving to us the opportunity through Christ to have unlimited, infinite peace in our lives, peace that passes understanding. They also said, getting back to our main point this morning, good tidings of great joy. I want to ask you this morning, what is the source of your joy? What is it that really gets you going? What is it that just brings joy in your heart, even through difficult times? Is it your possessions? No. Because you know, there are some things that happen in out with our possessions Let's take, for instance, a vehicle or a home. There's a word that goes hand in hand with the purchase of your vehicle. As soon as you drive it off the lot, it do, does what? Depreciates. Depreciation. Right? So, if you have, if you're relying on your possessions like so many people in the world are, if I could amass more wealth and if I could gain these things, I could have utter joy. No, you can't. There are people, if you go back to the various times in the 20th century where the stock market crashed, almost in every one of those people that had amassed a great amount of wealth and lost it suddenly were so overcome that they went out and they committed suicide. So did they have joy that, beyond, that was beyond their, 
their possessions? No, they did not have. The possessions could not provide them with that joy. Is it your favorite ball team? No, it's not our favorite ball team because guess what? Our favorite ball teams lose sometimes. You know, you have to be a diehard fan of some of these teams. You got to stick with them through the thick and the thin. We got a lot of Cardinals fans, so we know what that's all about, right? The various football teams, you know, there's people that they support the, you know, the football team that comes in last every year just because that's their team, and that's okay. But don't we find disappointment sometimes in them? How about your hobbies? We well, you know after a while, even some of our hobbies get old. We get to where they become mundane or we get to where we can't do them. We can't pursue them anymore. All of these things fade. So they don't really truly bring us the depth of joy that we really need. But Peter spoke in 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses 3 through 9, Peter was referring to the early Jews that had been dispersed. They had gotten run out of Israel, and they were scattered. And so he wrote a letter to them and reminded them, because the word had gotten to them of Christ, and they were being saved, and their hope they had was in Christ. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning of verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice Listen closely. With joy inexpressible. King James says joy unspeakable. And full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Another in infinite concept. When Peter is writing about the joy that we receive through Christ he is writing about the infinite joy that is beyond our comprehension. Joy unspeakable. I cannot describe it. It's inexpressible. It is infinite, and it goes on. In these verses, in verse 3, we find that we have a living hope that comes as we are promised the resurrection from the dead. In verse 4, we, are, we find here that through Christ we have an inheritance. That is incorruptible. An inheritance that is not going to depreciate. An inheritance that is not going to be destroyed. And it is reserved in heaven for true Christians. So today, do you know that you know Christ? Do you have an inheritance incorruptible? Do you have a, an inheritance that is reserved for you through Jesus Christ? Verse 6 says that we will have Verse 5 says that we will have salvation. Verse 6 says that we will have great rejoicing. Verse 7 says that we will have a precious faith. Christ will be a revealed. Folks, that is the Advent expectation. When we celebrate Christ, we celebrate his first coming. And there was an expectation and anticipation of his coming. And for those who were prepared, those who were watching, and those who were waiting it brought great joy. For those who have received Christ, we have great joy. But I want you to know this morning that the joy that I have through Jesus Christ here on this earth is nothing to be compared to the joy that I will have when I walk the streets of gold in the presence of Almighty God, in the presence of Jesus Christ who died for me because he's coming again and he's going to receive us, those who are true believers, those who have invited Jesus into their life. He's coming to receive us and to take us to that promise, to that um, 
to that inheritance incorruptible. In verse 8, he says, It will be, it is in our lives, joy inexpressible, joy unspeakable. It is good tidings of great joy. There's no reason for us to walk around today without a testimony on our lips. There's no reason for us to walk around today like the grandfather. And when the little boy identified grandfather's religion with the donkey that had the long face and the very so solemn look on his face. The Bible says, the angel said that they, that they came to proclaim good tidings. How many of y'all like good news? We like good news, don't we? We don't see very much of it, but we like good news. And we like that news to impact our lives. And so they said we have good news of great joy. And what is that? When Jesus came, the door was opened for the salvation of our souls. There is nothing that we will ever do. There's nothing that we will participate in. There is nothing that will ever be more important to us today than the salvation of our souls and Jesus came to bring that to us and we ought to rejoice when we sing the song in Christ alone and when we think about that every one of our sins was laid on him was piled on him and yet he came forth out of that grave victorious I don't have to have fear in this life. I don't have to walk in those things because I know that Jesus is my Savior and that ought to bring great joy. We should rejoice in the salvation of our souls through Jesus Christ. Without Christ, we are dead. Without Christ, we are dead. The Scripture tells us that we are in Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 through 6. Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 6. And you, if you are a born-again believer, this applies to you. Paul was writing to the church, to the believers in Ephesus. And you, he made alive. I didn't make myself alive. My life is in Christ alone. My joy is in Christ alone. My hope is in Christ alone. He is the one who has given me life. He made me alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Prior to Christ, there was no hope. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Y'all remember those days? You remember whenever you walked in sin? You remember when you had no hope? You remember when you were dead on the inside and you had that long face? Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. And here's one of those phrases in the Bible that you ought to pay attention to, starting in verse 4. But God... It didn't say, but because I gained enough strength, because I got good enough, because I achieved. But God, remember that. In the hardest times of your life, remember that. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. I want, I want you to stop and think about that for just a moment. When you read about salvation, have you read what the Bible says? Have you read the words that describe he is rich in mercy? Have you found the richness? Have you found for your life the fullness of the mercy of God? Do you realize what he has saved you from, do you realize the depth of his mercy? For he is rich in mercy because of his great love. It's not a little small love, but it is a love that is such a, of, of a great magnitude that salvation is extended to every man, woman, boy, and girl upon the face of this earth. With his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, 
you have been saved in Christ alone. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Folks, without Jesus, we're dead. But in Jesus, we are made alive. Joy comes with life and hope that is beyond our abilities. I have no ability of my own. But it is through Christ. Folks, we should have joy without description. We should have joy no matter the circumstances. The announcement by the angel was a proclamation of joy available to all men through Christ, but not all. Have you noticed that not all have true joy in Christ's salvation? You know why? Because they haven't accepted it. Good tidings of great joy to all people. But there are so many that have not received and have not accepted and they're living in misery in their lives because they do not know Jesus as their Savior and Lord. And just as it is today, it was then, sometimes an event or a gift that has been long sought for and expected is overlooked or it is rejected. And there were people in that day who rejected even though it had been proclaimed, it had been anticipated, it was an expected coming of Christ into the world. There were people who rejected and overlooked the birth of Christ. The Bible says that Jesus is coming again and there will be those who will overlook, who will reject and will not be where they ought to be with God. And that arrival will not be received by those who are expecting it. There were a lot of people taken by surprise because they were looking for the Savior to come a different way. You know what? There's a lot of people today that are looking at salvation in a lot of places that they're never going to find salvation in. Only through Jesus Christ. So today we share good tidings of great joy. So this becomes personal. Have you received Jesus? Do you comprehend what he has done for you? Do you have the joy of Christ's salvation in your life? Folks, our hearts ought to overflow with joy at the salvation of Jesus. And you may say, you've already said that. Yeah, and I'm going to continue to say it. Because our hearts ought to overflow with joy through the salvation of Jesus Christ. I would encourage you, if you have not done it, that you sit down with the words of that song that we sang a while ago in Christ alone and you take it word by word and you take it verse by verse and you read those words as they apply to your life. And you'll not be able to be but just overwhelmed with what Christ has done for you. That song covers the gamut of what Christ has done on our behalf. It ought to bring joy into our lives. Christmas is a time of anticipation and proclamation. We really don't even, you know, we, people, as I said, week before last, start putting money into uh, Christmas club accounts. The prophecies of the Old Testament held an anticipation of Christ. A virgin is going to conceive and bring forth a son. And his name will be Emmanuel, God with us, that Brother Alex covered last week. The angels came and they proclaimed with joy. For behold, we bring you good tidings of great joy, the birth of Jesus. The star was used by God to proclaim to the wise men the location of Jesus. And those men had an anticipation. They had studied the manuscripts. They had studied the scrolls. They had heard about this Jesus. And they set off on a long journey to come to honor him and to worship him. Today we sing carols that proclaim Jesus. We sing hymns even through the rest of the year, the rest of the calendar. We sing hymns that proclaim Jesus. But are we living in the joy of Christ and can we look forward to with great anticipation the return of Jesus? What about our lives as individuals? Do we proclaim the salvation of Jesus joyfully in our lives? When the world sees you, do they know <coughs> that you know Jesus? Do we rejoice in the hope of Christ? 
Luke chapter 1, verse 44, if you'll recall, the angel has come to Elizabeth, and, and uh, she's pregnant with John the Baptist. The angel has come to Mary. Mary has received and accepted this great event in her life that she would be the mother of Jesus. And as Elizabeth is about six months along, Mary goes to visit her. When Mary walks in and gives a salutation, Elizabeth says, For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. An unborn baby leaped in the mother's womb for joy. Why? It was John the Baptist, by the way. Why? Because it was the hope of salvation to come. The hope of salvation to come brought joy. Folks, we should not dread the return of Jesus Christ, but we ought to look forward to it in great anticipation and say, Lord, come. If today's the day that Jesus wants to come, we ought to be excited and ready to go. But we ought to be prepared to go as well. Not in dread. Are we standing on the promise of God's kingdom? That he is coming. And that he has a better thing for us. In Isaiah 35 verse 10. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. What do you do whenever you have joy in your heart? We lift up our voices and we rejoice. Sometimes we sing. Said the redeemed or the ransomed will come to Zion with singing with everlasting joy. There's another one of those words that is, has an, an infinite description. Everlasting joy in their head, on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall pass away. Folks, we've just been through a terrible event in our area. And it pains our heart. I'm going to share some things, maybe some ways that we can help a little bit after service this morning. But I want you to know, I'm not a fan of sorrow and misery. He said the times of sorrow and sighing will pass away. I'm looking forward to that time. I'm looking forward to the return of Jesus. Because in him, we have our joy. Folks, Jesus has come the first time. We are now in the anticipation and proclamation stage, preparation stage of the second advent of Christ's return to us. The heart of the Christian can and should be joyful about the return of Christ. The Christian should have no fear or dread, but live in joyful expectation. The anticipation of the return of Christ should turn our minds and our hearts from the troubles of this life to the joy of his coming. Folks, I want you to know something. Through Christ, we have hope. There is more for us to look forward to than just what this life holds. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, Paul wrote there and said, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. I'm so glad that there's something more than just what this life has to offer. There's a hope in Christ. And that my joy is found in that hope of Christ. There's more to look forward to. John chapter 14, verse, the last half of verse 2 and verse 3. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. His kingdom is coming. And we get to be a part of that if we know him as our Savior. For the Christian, that promise from Christ should be one of the most joy-filled statements that we've ever heard. Where I am, there you may be also. Folks, the joy of heaven... The beauty of heaven, the splendor of heaven is not going to be streets of gold and gates of pearl. 
It's going to be when we stand in the presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we realize his holiness. When we realize his righteousness. When we realize his purity. When we fully understand his love. That, that is what heaven is all about. Good tidings of great joy. Do you have a joyful anticipation of the return of Christ? Have you relied on him for salvation? Is your salvation in Christ alone? Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Revelation chapter 22, three times in Revelation 22 in verse 7a, the first part of verse 7, in verse 12 and verse 20. 7a, Jesus said, Behold, I am coming quickly. Verse 12, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Verse 20, He who testifies of these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy today that Jesus is coming again. Maybe we're a little weary in the waiting. Maybe we're a little tired of the trouble surrounding us. But folks, lift up your voices, lift up your hearts, lift up your countenance in joy. For God has given us good tidings of great joy today, which shall be to all for who that will receive him. There were only a few at the time of Jesus' birth who were prepared for his coming. The innkeeper wasn't. Herod wasn't. Most of Israel wasn't. But Jesus came. And in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that there are going to be a lot that are not going to be prepared for his coming. But Jesus is coming. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Surely I come quickly. Is your joy found in the return of Jesus today? Or as we've read these words, have you said, you know, I haven't experienced that joy in my life. I don't have that joy. I don't know Jesus as my Savior. And when I think about the return of Christ, it actually brings a dread. I'm filled with fear about the return of Christ. There's no reason for you to have fear when you can have joy unspeakable and full of glory and you can live in the peace that passes all understanding through Jesus Christ. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Jesus is coming quickly. As our musicians come this morning for a time of response, do you have the joy of Christ in your life today? Do you know Jesus? And are you looking forward to, with great anticipation, the return of Christ? Or are you standing back in the back stall somewhere with a long face? Folks, our joy is in the great love and the precious faith that we have in Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Proclaim the love of Jesus. Proclaim the hope of Jesus from your life. Live it every day and let it come forth from your life. But if you're here and you don't know Jesus, I would encourage you today to be very quick about stepping out and coming. The Bible says, Behold, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to come. Don't put it off. Jesus is coming quickly. There were a lot of people who missed his first coming because they weren't prepared. This is one coming of Christ that you don't want to miss. So be prepared. Would you stand with me this morning as we have our invitation and our altars are open if you'd like to come and pray. Almighty God, as we come to you this morning, Father, we come with joy in our hearts for the salvation of Jesus Christ and for the peace that passes understanding. But yet, Lord, we also come with sighing and sorrow on behalf of our friends, neighbors, and family members uh, in our communities roundabout 
that have gone through such a devastating time. Lord, we know that there is a tremendous loss of life. We pray, dear God, that you will just bless those that are still looking and searching for their family members. We pray, dear God, for good news and uh, for continued uh, blessing in that. We pray, dear God, that you will just uh, open our eyes and our hearts that we can find ways to help and to share as you have blessed us abundantly that we would be able to bless others. We pray, dear God, that uh, you'll just comfort those that are hurting. There are many in the hospitals bring healing upon their bodies through this devastating time. And Lord, just, uh, just, just be a comfort. Lord, that's just all we know to say right now is just to call out to you and ask you, dear God, to comfort their hearts and to be a blessing to them. Father, we love you today, and we thank you for loving us. We thank you, Father, for your word today, and we pray, dear God, that it will find a dwelling place in our lives, that it will be a word that we will think on often, that we will live each day of our lives as we walk with you, sharing the good tidings of great joy that Jesus is coming quickly. I pray, Father, that if there's anyone here today that does not know you as their Savior, and for whatever reason, they couldn't step out and come and say, Lord, I need you in my life today. I pray to God that before they'll walk out of these doors, that they would come find one of us, any, any one of our deacons or, or, or Pastor Alex or some of us, myself or another Christian, and say, I need you to pray with me. And Lord, that we could come back to the altar and we could gather around them and we could pray and rejoice as they find the joy and hope of Jesus Christ in their lives. Father, may you use us mightily for your glory and for your honor. We love you today and we thank you for loving us. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our precious Savior and Lord. Now at this time, if you would, please lift your hands toward heaven to receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Turn to shake hands with one another and may you go out in the peace and the joy of the Lord today proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.